off that shiny disc I see. <laughs> it's a DVD. Why, is DVD any better than my old VHS VCR player? It's a digital video disc. Well, is it, <laughs> is it video or versatile? Actually, it's I'm not totally versatile. Okay, well, because you can do so many things with it. <laughs> yeah, throw it. Record uh, data onto it. Re record data onto it if you have a certain kind. Yeah. But are you trying to tell me that I don't need my VCR anymore? You need I need your VCR, your beta player, or, you, you know, your laser disc player. Get rid of your 19 laser discs. Because now you can have them on a size of a CD-ROM. Ooh, like the kind of CD-ROMs they give away to join Hillel at Marsh? That's correct, but they hold exponentially more. Alright, so obviously, welcome to Movie Munchie Party. <laughs> I'm Joe. I'm Adrian. We have uh, our special guest, Adrian. Frequent, uh, frequent commentator and uh, Harvey Firestein enthusiast. <laughs> uh, Jerk's taking a, taking a sabbatical to try, and so... He's got friends there. <laughs> yes. Um, so, DVDs. We are both were quite huge fans of the DVD format. So. Yeah, I still liked physical media to a point, but not like I did yes. in, the mid, in, the mid, in the 2000s. Yeah, the 2000s. Um, well, you know, let's start back at the start. The first time I remember seeing a DVD, it was at, I believe it was still on cue at the time. It was. And it was George of the Jungle. I think mine was Stargate. And it, Stargate was a very popular, uh, <laughs> hey guys, DVD, Stargate. I think they gave away, uh, I think when you bought a DVD player, uh, the very first one, they gave Stargate to you. Yes, when I, um, all right, the first, the, I convinced my dad to get a DVD player. Right. Um, it was like September, actually, I believe it was, it actually was Labor Day weekend, 99. Instead of getting... The anniversary of it. Instead of getting the, you know, like, Dreamcast on nine nine ninety nine, right? I got a DVD player because, whoa, DVD. And, like, I had, like, all these reasons. Like, well, we should get a DVD player because, you know, what happens if you, like, want to pause a movie? VHS, you remember when you paused it? It was all... You can actually screen grab. This is the first time you can legitimately do a screen grab that didn't look like garbage. Yeah. And... I was like, everything's in widescreen. You can watch a movie on your computer now if you had a DVD ROM player. Yes. My, uh, um. And then you're. This out. No, yeah, <laughs> no, no. It's fine. And you were right. It, is, it was the rise of the widescreen, which, you know, you could always get a special edition VHS widescreen, but they weren't always readily available. And I actually special ordered a couple. Mm -hmm. um, but I, as I, I believe I talked about before, you could get them. Like, like Target had sold widescreen, like the Lost World next to widescreen, regular. Or yeah, widescreen. but it was it was it was definitely harder. To, it wasn't as readily available. And for good reason, um, to people that were like, it doesn't look very good because the quality was very very terrible. I mean, it was VHS. In in the sense that you your resolu your lines of resolution, which. Um, so anyway, so when I, when we bought our first DVD player, it actually came with a copy of Batman and Robin packaged inside. Wow. And then you could send in for free, for five free movies. Mm -hmm. And I know Stargate was one of them. One was Stepmom. I want to say Lethal Weapon 4? That sounds about right. And... Are they all Warner Brothers releases? No, it was a mix because, um... Actually, uh, the stepmom is Sony. It was like a mix of all the studios that were in it at the time. Stargate was released by like Artisan was a big company around that. I think time. Artisan owned the rights to release the film. Whatever happened to Artisan? I don't know, but they had a lot of random good films. I mean, they had Terminator rights forever. Yeah. T two rather. Yeah. Um, I mean, they, they, they had, had a lot of art films. They had to still be raking in that money from Blair Witch. Oh God. <laughs> I mean, I held Blair Witch on Blu-ray, so I know. Um, you know, it was it was very. It was you saw it. I mean, I, I remember. I remember 
going to Walmart. I mean, I saw them at on queue. Mm -hmm. But I remember going to Walmart and they were like, whoa. Movies on discs? And I could watch on my computer, on the computer? Yes. And it looks way clearer? That's cool. So we bought two, no, we bought two movies. Yeah. And it was Ghostbusters. Of course. Which, I will argue, is still one of the best DVD releases to ever happen. It's, it's, it was a fantastic dish, disc that showed the potential for it, which then Sony led the way in making the discs terrible, uh, eventually. And full screen, yes, because that was an option, Happy Gilmore, because oh, yeah. it did not come in, Universal did not release a widescreen edition of that film. And, well, until years later. Yes. Um, but there was, full screen was a, because that was what people were used to watching on a 4-3 television. On, yeah, on, at home. And there's a lot of uh, a lot of anger from people that they like, well, I don't want to watch it the way it was intended. I want to watch it the size of my screen. Yeah, it was always really, fr I mean, you know, we had friends. We have mutual friends. Well, I guess we consider them friends. I mean, if they, <laughs> I guess, that owned full screen copies of things. And why do they own it? Because they didn't care. Yes. It, it, it was very frustrating to, to know that they didn't care whether or not they were seeing the full image or not. I know. Uh, you I, know exactly what I'm talking about, too. I mean, can you imagine, you know, Conrad Hall shooting it and then you watching it? <laughs> <laughs> May he rest in peace. <laughs> That's a good joke. <laughs> so I, the story he wants me to tell is basically... Fox, good lord, it was 2003, 2004 maybe, it was well into DVD's lifespan. Mm -hmm. It's not like it was just, it, it was all of a sudden, it's well into DVD's lifespan. People know that there's a difference between the full print and the widescreen at mm -hmm. this point. Um, or at least they know that there's options. Yes. They don't necessarily know what they mean, but they know there's options. Well, it's that, it's that little bar at the top of the, at the, top of the case. Right. And they, for whatever reason, I was obsessed with getting office space. Mm -hmm. And it, it's all of a sudden got pulled from all the shelves and went missing for months and months and months and months and months. And then it came back in force, and they were all full screen copies only. And this was very annoying to me. But what was more annoying is the small sticker that came on the packaging. I read, no black bars! As it was, <laughs> like it was some big selling point. That you were losing the picture, and it 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 graded me. So what I did was sit there and take off them off, and I put them <laughs> in a notebook. <laughs> Do you still have them? No, I don't. I don't. Oh, like a notebook in the store? No, no, a notebook that I wrote like for this class. <laughs> okay. I don't know whatever happened to it, but I'm sure I threw it away. Out of spite. <sighs> yeah, probably. Now I. The, the, the were, there were the occasional movies that were not released in widescreen. And it kind of seems strange. Sometimes it would be, here's both, or here's only one. And whoever was in charge of that, what were they thinking? It doesn't make any sense. Um, I think a lot of it was just, oh, this way we don't have to explain to people what the difference is. Well, one of the more frustrating companies with this was is the Disney company. Oh, Jesus, yeah. Because what they will do is they will... Here's an example. The, the Homeward Bound, the 90, early 90s one, um, it's released in full screen only. Homeward Bound 2 is widescreen only on disc. And yet the 2-pack still keeps them that way. Mm -hmm. So you, you get one of each. That's really nice. Who is that for? For the kids. Because Parents, you get number two. That's for you yeah. guys. Yeah. After hours. Well, <laughs> actually, Homeward Bound 2 um, does have this great scene where it's like a Disney movie version of what a punk in San Francisco looks like mm -hmm. <laughs> when they're in the police station. Yeah. There's, it's it's very good. Like, it's very, like, <laughs> like he's got the spiked hair. Like, he, like it's just, like, central casting all the way. That's awesome. Um, I just remember being really frustrated by Disney perpetually because of a lot of their films. Until they until they realized that there was ag I don't know why they were held, held out. They held out for a very long time before they started releasing the classics on there. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if they did that for VHS or not. 
because it was, feels like VHS was their market forever. You know, yeah. it's still their market. You can you can still make not legitimate money, but you can make more than a quarter selling Disney movies on VHS. Well, it's because they're in the special claim showcase, right? And people are, are just obsessed with that whole motif. And I just feel like they took them forever to make uh, the, the cut over. I know Rocket Man. Mm-hmm. Rocket Man has still never been released in white screen. Well, it's never, and I, you know that was a movie from my childhood that I enjoyed thoroughly, and I would like to have owned, but I never did because it was on full, it was full screen period only, always. Mm-hmm. And heavyweights for a long time was like that, until they decided, hey guys, Blu-ray completely loaded with special features. Yeah, and with no real like fanfare pronouncement of it, it just kind of came out. It's like, hey guys, this. I think they're always kind of embarrassed of heavyweights, though. Yeah. Because it's not... I don't know. It's not really a family movie, but it's also... I mean, it doesn't even have any um, anybody that was on Home Improvement in it. <laughs> you know, that was the big thing in the 90s, was to have every single cast member except for the mom from Home Improvement in a movie. Yeah, well, I mean, what's she done for us lately? I mean, you know what? If Dirk was here, he could tell us exactly what she's done for us lately, I would assume. <laughs> um, yeah. You know. <laughs> now speaking of uh, being late to the late to the game, what was the deal with Warner Brothers and their insistence on snap cases? Well into well into. I the had no problem with snap cases. I I kind of like the variety. But you were driven nuts by snap cases. You would you would refuse to buy movies on just because they had they they came in a snap case. Well, snap cases are there's but it's like they're damaged immediately. Um, yeah. They, they, if they falls apart, they the inside, have more room. It takes more room because yeah. you have the buffer. Um, like if the inside case, if the little uh, the holder falls apart, too bad. <laughs> well, but Warner Brothers is also notorious for re-releasing things, everything. Mm. Re-releasing, re-releasing, re-releasing. I mean, how many times has Coop, you know, in now counting Blu-ray, how many times has it released a Stanley Cooper collection? And but also. Wasn't he one of the, the late comers to it as well? Didn't they didn't they wait to put um, his movies? Yes, I know. Like like Spielberg didn't want any of his movies on on DVD. It's like, well, I don't know about this DVD thing. Let's let's see if it pans out. I mean, Star Wars famously took forever, like, like five years. Of, well, I think it was more. It feels like it was more than that. I want to say two thousand four, maybe that it came out. Maybe, yeah. Well, the Matrix, the Matrix came out. It was the first and to see, sell a million copies, and that was a big deal. That was the number. That was the third disc I bought was the Matrix, and that to me was the gateway. Oh yeah, for a lot of people, it was the Matrix because that was the new popular film that people didn't really find in the theater, but they found on home, home video, and and they were like, oh, we can get a better version of it with better sound and better picture. Yeah, and I want to see that. I mean, that's the kind of thing that would, and The Matrix would be all about a DVD instead of a VHS tape. Absolutely. And the, I recall, the, I don't know if you were there, we rented a DVD player for a party. Ooh, I don't recall we this. We did a double feature of Ghostbusters and The Matrix. And all the ladies were there. Oh, yeah? And Eric Yetters was there. Ooh. Eric Yetters, the elusive, uh, tried, tried to get as a, as a commentator on here. Doesn't return my calls. That if you're listening, well, the offer's still open. Come on, Eric. Yeah. Come on the phone. Come on. Pick up. Pick up. <laughs> We're going to wait right here until you do. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, it was really, The Matrix was the big, the big movie when it came out on DVD because that's where a lot of people found it. Yeah. And another another good thing about DVDs that surprised me we haven't talked about yet, special features. Yeah. Never before did, I mean, you sometimes had special features, whether they were before or after the film, but if they were after the film, you, sometimes you didn't know. If you were done with the movie, you just kind of turned it off. Mm-hmm. You know, now I don't, obviously, because what am I stupid? Well, in, in a post, in a post, um, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, Monkey Takes the Coin <laughs> world, you, everything has a post-credits trailer or teaser or whatever. Well, okay, we, um... We went out. We went to go see the end of the tour, the movie about um, David Foster Wallace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like the credits are going, and like I jokingly, I I, I turned I turned to Dirk and I'm like, oh, was it gonna be a was it gonna be a scene after the credits? 
And there's a scene in the middle of the credits. See? <laughs> it, everybody does it. It is. And so, based, but, but back in VHS days, you wouldn't wait. Because you'd have to watch it eight minutes of credits. Or fast forward. Maybe. Or fast forward. Now, VHS did do the fantastic thing. Actually, maybe this was only a Warner Brothers thing. I'm specifically thinking of Free Willy and Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, where during the credits, they would show the hit music video of their respective movies. Oh, they did the, used to do that. And the credits would just roll over it. Yes. <laughs> that was awesome. So, I mean, if you wanted to watch the music video with text in front of it, <laughs> that was your way to that. do it. But yeah, special feature because of the, the rise of commentary. Mm-hmm. You know, which commentary now is is expected as standard. Yeah. Even though lots of them don't have commentary. Anymore. And, I mean, honestly, I'm trying to think of the last time I actually listened to a commentary. That's the thing. A lot of them are garbage. Because a lot of these people don't have anything to say, really. They're not interesting outside of the films they make. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they'll get very good ones. You know you know the ones that are good. You know they are a listening audience. Yeah, you, you know. You know. But, I mean, I would, you know, when I would get, when I would get a DVD, I had to make sure I had the best edition. And at the start, it was easy because the best edition was the only edition. <laughs> like The Matrix, it came with special features. Not a lot. I remember being really excited for Mystery Men, and it had like a half hour of deleted scenes. Yeah. And some of those were funny. I mean, I remember, <laughs> I, I don't have any more. But um, it was it was ahead of its time. If it came out today, it'd probably still be a complete failure. But. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it was cool having deleted scenes too at your brain because the, you know in the VHS they, they sometimes gave you stuff like that, mm-hmm. and but it was sort of like instead of hearing about these things after the fact, you got to see them. Yeah, you know that's where, um, for example, it was readily available now to see um, the Exorcist director's cut. Yeah. Um, which, Famed for the uh, spider walk and such. Now you can have it in home, home, home boot video form. And you could have alternate versions. Right. Like you could, like the thing. The scariest thing you could, version you've <laughs> ever seen or whatever it was built as. I mean, you could watch the Abyss. You can watch the director's cut or the actual cut by the touch of a button. Right. So you can't see it on uh, Blu-ray. So if you want to watch the Abyss, you have to see <laughs> it on good old DVD. Box DVD, because they also have the double cases. Yes, Fox had the nice double cases, which made you seem like you're getting a really good value. But now, and then they were quickly replaced by the single case, and I was really disappointed at first, because I was like, that's really annoying, I want I want it big, and it's like, wait, wait, saving room is a good idea. Yeah, like the cases, they used to be so big, and um, I love I loved the big cases. Like, if I had the choice, I would have picked a big case. Or, like, a TV would come in <laughs> six standard-sized cases. <laughs> and you have to have, like, a whole table to open it up to right. find out. To, like, or, like, to lay it out. Yeah. And then they started came, coming in the slim packs, and it was sort of like, what? What is this stuff? Yeah. Well, the first one I ever had was Futurama, and I thought, oh, because it's about the future, that makes sense. And then it was, it was just everything. Future. Yeah. Uh, TV was... TV, I think... TV has its heyday because of DVD. Yes, I feel like a lot like we are in the golden age of television, as they say, um, because of because of DVD. It made it marketable. I mean, before on VHS, what you could buy like the complete series of Mash <laughs> on ninety nine video cassettes for four thousand dollars or something. But the thing you you laugh about it, but that's what it was like. <laughs> Did you ever go into those old you know back when they sold only videos like? Um, Mall, you know, mall movie stores mm-hmm. that had every VHS copy of tape of things. Yeah. They would have like every Star Trek: The Next Generation video cassette, mm-hmm. and they would have two episodes per video cassette. Yep. And there were a hundred and ninety some episodes. Mm-hmm. So they would have every single one, and they would cost thirty to forty to fifty bucks a pop. And it was just kind of like because no one knew what really what to do with TV. No. It's like you, you show it and then, all right, we'll see you later. Yeah. And then at DVDs, like, hey guys, what if we just put like, like some TV shows on, on you? Yeah, it's like, okay, you can have a two hour movie or you could have a 22 episode, meaning about, you know, 1,200 hours, minutes of television. And it really, I mean, and then it just sort of like expected that 
oh, I'll just catch that later. I mean, everybody talks about binge watching it on Netflix or whatever. It used to be, I'll just binge watch it when the DVD comes out. Mm -hmm. And they would always release them. Like an ex a popular show, um, like Lost was a big DVD. Oh, yeah. Um, they would come out like, you know, like a week or two before the new season started. And then you would know, be a big seller, and then you're like, oh, i got to watch all the episodes. And, and I did that. In two days or whatever. I definitely did that. And that was some shows. And, you know, because you wanted to be a part of the conversation. Right. And this time, it's not just water cooler talk. It's you could, and you now now it's standard. Oh, we watched four seasons of something in the night, mm -hmm. or the new novels in the night. But you know what I mean. We, 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 we watched all all four seasons of Vivaldi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, definitely that's interesting. You know, it, it, I would I would totally credit DVD with the reason that television is having. You know, obviously yeah, HBO was a big part of it too. But I mean. Yeah, uh, DVD, the ability to make it marketable again, rather than just on initial viewing, yeah, was huge. And there was a big, and then once they started releasing shows, it's like people, there's a market for this. I mean, like Family Guy is it, still on the air because the DVD sold. Yeah. Which whether I whether I like or dislike that. This is the thing that happened. I, I was part of the. I was part of the problem. Yeah. No. I mean, <laughs> it's. But it's fascinating. Yeah. You know, it's the same for Future Mom. Yeah. They brought it back specifically because they knew that because of DVD sales. Mm -hmm. You know. So, both times actually. Yeah. But hey, maybe it'll come back again in the in the year three thousand. When will be new episodes? You know what really annoyed me um, in general about. And you and I, you and I would sit around making fun of them. We were just the re-releases because yes. that became standard. After after a while, it became standard to re-release bare bones discs. That, that was a term that they had bare bones, which means they had nothing on them in the movie, maybe a trailer. Um, and they would re-release. Paramount is the number one offender of this that I can recall. Paramount and Warner Brothers. And while. Um now, one one of the things that DVD did do was bring a lot of a lot of older movies into the spotlight. Like, you, like an older movie could be like, oh, a brand brand new release would be like the current releases, and then also a, a classic, a, somewhat classic, or even a somewhat obscure movie. And like, you could go into like a a big department store and get Circuit this. City. You go into your Circuit <laughs> City. All right, now that's all. All right, we'll get to Circuit <laughs> City. Um, <laughs> But you could go in and get like all these movies that somewhere have never been available on VHS, and yeah. and just hey, here they are in really good condition. Um, but then after a while, studios were like, why should we release all of these old movies? Nobody wants to buy movie Y, the African Queen, which was not released on DVD for for years, for years until years until years. until Blu-ray was well established. Yeah. And there was, a, I remember, because there was always the AFI 100, and the only movie that was the holdout was The African Queen. Mm -hmm. But, so instead of releasing all those movies, they would release movie X again and again and again. Mm -hmm. And, now how would they differentiate? <laughs> God, this is such a bad segue. I, the, <laughs> they would give them these awful titles. I feel like Paramount really was the worst. Paramount was the king of them. <laughs> because Paramount would also just release bare bones DVDs all the time. It wasn't yes. for years. It wasn't for years until they started releasing better. It, it was about two thousand two, two thousand three, when they started actually releasing good DVDs. And at that point, it was already like New Line and Warner, uh, New Line and uh, Fox were king of DVD. Oh yeah, I mean Fox. One of the one of the first like packed special editions was Fox's Fight Club. Yeah, which is still one of my favorite DVDs of all time. And it's just, hey guys, here's how you make a movie. Here's here's how we made this movie. Yep, from the bottom up. Here's yeah. here's here's everything about it. Here's a director's commentary. Here's a making of. Here are production. You know, not production stills, but uh, production design. Yeah. You know, uh, here's a, here's everything about this movie you could ever want. And it really used it really used the format because you could watch the special features and and rotate through like, oh, I want to watch the final cut. I want to watch the pre-production. I want to watch them actually shooting it. The storyboards. Not only that, that, and the, and they had ang I remember they had angle cuts, and not only even that. They also they had multiple commentaries, mm -hmm. and on top of that, uh, they had one, one of my favorite things 
which was um, commentary on deleted scenes, mm-hmm. which is not something you saw very often. Right. I would say the only thing that you saw before then was was another Dave Venture film, Seven. Which actually, the, actually came out after the, the DVD came out after. Oh, did it? Mm-hmm. And they definitely mimicked it. Yes. New Line looked at Fight Club and said, "That's what we're doing," and they won up the game because that had like four commentary tracks and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. No, David Fincher understood DVD and what people wanted. He still does. He understands Blu-ray. Yeah. And it's incredible what he uh, and that he's able to release physical media that still warrants a purchase in a digital age. I mean, even though Gone Girl didn't have any special features, it came with a, a fake. Book. Yeah, the, main the amazing Amy book. Which, why not? Because uh, he, like, he designed like okay. The, the 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 Blu-ray and also the DVD, the case for that, it is a, this this wonderful image that was used in the theatrical marketing. Um, but how easily could it have just been a huge picture of Ben Affleck's face? <laughs> I mean, very easily, because we they did that they did that with Argo, or is a big they always did that with. Terrible thing. They would never use the covers, the, or the posters, or the cool artwork, or all kinds of. They'd always insist on just having just large pictures of the actors' faces because you know it, it, somewhere there's like people won't know who's in this movie otherwise. They can't read the name. They have to see the face. They, they don't know who that is. And they can't, you know, be expected to to look at like an eye-catching cover and say, "Ooh, that looks good." No, they have to see. Ben Affleck, just right there. <laughs> but you know, but they back to what we were saying earlier. They had, Paramount was the king of bad, bad title. Because and what they did on the because many for their comedies. What they did on the back was they had this big list of special features, and their special features were like scene selection, um, sound. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they would have it on every single thing. It was theatrical trailer, stereo or mono, scene selection, and it's. Like it was Those like aren't a, special features. Like it was like this huge list, and it, made, it was like, oh, well, look at all these special features. I mean, it's enhanced for 16 by 9. <laughs> Clearly. What a special feature. But, yeah, they were, you, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Okay. They, they had, you know. And, well, I mean, they had Airplane. They released Airplane, and that was a big deal at the time, because Airplane took forever to be released. I remember it wasn't released until 2002, it wasn't there. And then they re-released Airplane because they released when they released it, they released nothing with it. Yes. And it was the "Don't Call Me Shirley" edition. <laughs> it's like the part from the movie. Yeah. <laughs> and oh, planes, trains, and automobiles. Right. What was that? The, the "Those Aren't Fellows" edition. Yep, I have that. Uh, <laughs> How embarrassing! Is that? <laughs> the um, what was it? You had Tommy Boy, the Holy Schnikey edition. <laughs> But see, these were all discs that, uh, upon original release. They were terrible. There was nothing on them. That, that, that they wanted to differentiate. Because what's wrong with special edition? Or even just... Now, some play, some some companies, like, like New Line, New Line had Infinifilm. Infinifilm. There was a whole line. It replaced their Platinum series. Yes. The Platinum, see, I actually liked the Platinum series better. I did too. And I think a lot of that had to do with the movies that were on Platinum. Like, Platinum series had Seven and... Boogie Nights and Magnolia and like Infinifilm was like 13 days 15 minutes I know they love numbers <laughs> except seven. I think <laughs> I think the only Infinifilm I had was uh, Nightmare on Elm Street because mm-hmm. that was exciting to actually have a Nightmare on Elm Street special edition yeah but again it was they were talking about how it's going to change the way you watch a movie no it didn't no it was yeah. it didn't at all it's just marketing it was marketing just like uh, Sony's uh, super bit yeah oh these were awful well, all right. You know how you like your uh, your, D- your DVDs with special features? Forget that. This is on purpose, no special features, because we're maxing out bit rate for a super bit rate, where the movie will look the best it could ever look until they decided to push Blu-ray. <laughs> but but so. also on your four by three TV, it doesn't make any difference. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they were trying to feature-proof it. <sighs> Oh, God, that's such a mistake. How else are you supposed to watch Hollow Man? <laughs> or Adaptation, which is the only version of Adaptation that's ever released on DVD, even though there was a long, long believed special edition. There was a trailer for the special edition released by the studio. And never how, many years, how many years down the road are we now? 12? 14? Well, I'm still waiting for it. Yeah. I'd buy it on DVD. That's fine. I'll be a <laughs> caveman for it. <laughs> DVD is really a caveman format. It, it is. is. With the Blu-ray, but that's okay. So if we were to name some special editions, 
you know, I, that, I, I do you want to name? Do you want to name our versions of special editions? Yes, I mean, I feel like like they don't do that anymore. Okay. And that's like, did was there like one guy who worked at Paramount that <laughs> just like, hey guys, I got a new one for you? Yeah, I feel like it was Gary. Uh, probably some some sort of nepotism down there, and <laughs> they just couldn't let him go, and so they had to do it. <laughs> and they're like, I wonder, like. Like, like with the Sony email, like all the hack, um, or the, the release, I want that to be one for Paramount, because I want to know what the studio executives thought of these special editions. With so, the circa games. 2005 or whatever? Yes. Or 2000, even 2007, 2008, they were releasing this stuff. Yeah, that was... 2006. Yeah. Jeez. Ah, now I feel old. But I also feel like that's way too late to have stupidly named DVDs out. So, so yeah, let's, uh... You want, to go, you want to try? Let, let's let's come up with. Let's see if we can come up with a couple. Um, well, Titanic, yeah. big uh, big big Paramount hit, which also didn't come out. Now with Titanic, when they actually did release it, it was just as like special director's edition or some yeah. sort of, some sort of classy name. What if it, what if it been like I'm the king of the world edition? <laughs> yeah, king of oh, the world okay. edition or. Or let go, <laughs> let go, whatever your name is, or old lady. Rose, <laughs> let go, old lady who throws the necklace into the ocean at the end of the movie. Or what about just that? What if they just named the <laughs> old lady throws the necklace in the ocean at the end of the movie edition? Well, like there was a different because then it would confuse people. It's like, isn't that what happened in the regular edition? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a special edition. It's the Statue of Liberty is really a tiny edition. <laughs> I mean, I just feel. I feel like uh, you know they would. I, I I would love to see. I'd love to see that like Cloud Atlas. The Cloud Atlas, the true. You speak the true, true edition. Because <laughs> everybody loves Cloud Atlas. <laughs> well, at Cloud Atlas, like I watched Cloud Atlas at home on the home video format. Yeah. Actually, it was on it was on a DVD from the library, and like the whole time I'm just like, I should, maybe I'll just shut this off. But then I just like oh, maybe I should just keep watching. I ended up watching the whole thing. But the whole time I was thinking, do I like this? Do yeah. I want to watch the rest of this? Yeah, like, was, that, was that the response they were going for? I think that's, I think, I, I think that was, you know, on Rotten Tomatoes, what they wrote under critical consensus, consensus <laughs> was, do we really want to watch this? Question mark? And just left it at that. Well, and the, and the weirder it got, the more I was like, well, I, should, I guess I'll watch this. And then you wait ten minutes and it gets weirder. Mm -hmm. But it's about, like, life and stuff. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, Vanilla Sky, the, um, everything in its right place edition. <laughs> the, uh... Based off Radiohead's hit song, everything in its right place. One other thing, <laughs> one other thing that, they, that they've tried to do a couple of times is to include the director's picture awkwardly on the cover. I don't know this. Oh, you do. Uh, Jersey Girl, for example. Oh my gosh, you're right. <laughs> you... They just threw Kevin Smith on the front cover for some reason. <laughs> yeah. Again, but this is this is like the actor's thing. On, that, 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 that can't be the poster. If the, especially if the poster was some cool artwork or some abstract sort of thing around it. It can't be that. It has to be, you know, and, actor's faces. And you're right, Kevin Smith would always, because Kevin Smith had a brand on DVD. Mm -hmm. He was, I mean, he's... He exists largely he, he, because of the home market. Yeah, he was incredibly popular. Well, what's the last movie of his that you enjoyed? Okay. <laughs> yeah, um, exactly. You know, he, he's very into podcasting. He's probably listening to this. I hope. If you're listening, Kev, keep on doing it. And if you want to be a guest on our show, well... Come up with some hilarious addition. Yes, yeah, uh... <laughs> Like, the, like Clue, I am your singing telegram. <laughs> <laughs> Another Paramount release. Another Paramount classic, like uh, you know, where's the Lost Ark? The I don't know the famous line from the the, the part where the guy goes into the propeller blade edition. <laughs> well, <laughs> oh, you know, speaking of Clue, that really bothered me. There was another. Can I swear on this? <laughs> um, I don't know. There was another fucking uh, Whoa. thing that Paramount did. On Cl the Clue DVD, uh -huh. they released it, and they announced on the back three alternate endings. Yeah. 
But those were all the endings that were everybody knew. There's three alternate endings to Clue. <laughs> well, in the home in the home video market. on the home on the home video market, right? While while it was um, what I believe, and then um, was that well, I believe this to be true. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is not a conspiracy. <laughs> um, that when it was released to theaters, different theaters did get the one of the three right, versions. But but I was well, but it was a movie that was on video forever mm-hmm. and it was on TV forever and the TV also had all three endings. Yes. So it's not a special feature anymore. In the theatrical edition it would have been but it, now it's 25 years out. Now, now, did it have the option for you to just pick the movie at ran- and then it would randomly select one of the endings? I don't that know. I never good. did have the D- Clue DVD unfortunately. Now, one of the things that like, like, let's talk about Gremlins 2 here for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> you always are. You yes. never, never stop. Now, Gremlins 2, famously in the in the theatrical release, has a part where where it appears as though the film burns, and then you're in the movie theater with Hulk Hogan. As after the Gremlins have you know made shadow puppets and shown a, a nudie volleyball match right. <laughs> film, um, and I was very disappointed because on video that was replaced with a video VCR type version, which and, you did not, which you don't like, which I don't, which I which I now having watched it. Again, I don't mind it, but because that was the only option, I was very, very upset. Because that was my, that was one of my favorite parts of the movie, and then for it to just be gone. See, this blew my mind because I didn't know there was a theatrical thing because I saw it originally on home video. Mm-hmm. So I had no idea there was a different cut. And but then when it came on DVD, the the regular version that like you just you, you press the version and you're, you watch the movie, it's the theatrical version, and I did enjoy that. And the other is as a bonus feature. Oh. Yes. Are you ready for this? Whoa. MGM flip discs. <laughs> Here was a great idea. Most discs, the dual layer discs, and they would flip automatically either during a movie or some other time. Most of the time, there would be a stutter. You know, like you have your cigarette burns on your film reels. Mm-hmm. You could always tell when there was a layer change because about halfway through your movie or so, yeah, it, would, it, would, it would freeze for a second yes. and it would go to the next layer. And you and I would always point out the layer changes. Oh, we would do that, yes. The layer change. Because uh, we are that sad. <laughs> remember, that time, remember that time we were like, hey, let's go watch our favorite scenes of Magnolia, and then we'll go hang out with our other friends, and we just watched all of Magnolia. Yeah, because it's a great movie. <laughs> but that's really sad. Because there's so many great scenes. There are. We just watched the whole movie. Um, Dirk hasn't seen Magnolia, so he could not add to it. That's fine. I, I, he has my DVD. Cause I, cause I got, I got it on Blu-ray. Still haven't watched it. Still hasn't watched it. It's the fastest three hours of your life. It is. Um, my point was MGM had this brilliant idea. Screw dual layer discs. We're gonna buy single layer discs, <laughs> and single layer discs were awesome because they had layers on each side. Mm-hmm. So they were still technically dual layer, but they were not automatic. You had to flip. You them. had to flip them. Uh, my my least favorite one of all of these. Usually, usually the reason they did that was. They would advertise that on one side of the disc you could have a widescreen edition of the movie, mm-hmm. and the other side of the disc you get a full screen edition of the movie. Why you would need both, I don't know, but they did that. Do you remember? Uh, yeah, and I know a couple of like uh, so, um, Sony did that for a while, where they were. It was just so annoying. It, it was. It the was. worst. The worst was though. Disney did this. Disney did this, and MGM did this is that they would put exclusive special features on either another disc of the of the movie or on the flip side. Mm-hmm. Like I remember when Roger Rabbit came out. Who from Roger Rabbit came yep. out, which we waited forever for. Mm-hmm. And they put the, the most coveted special features, the actual Roger Rabbit shorts, in you know a higher resolution than they've ever been before. On the full screen disc. On the full screen disc. Why in the world you'd ever watch that? And I'm... I, we, I think we really thought because that's what the kids were going to watch. Yeah, because for, you know, for the kids. Because, and and kids of, course, of course, the shorts were presented in their widescreen ratio. Yeah. <laughs> right. Or <laughs> remember what, like the Weird Al Yankovic UHF disc. Let's uh, just put the deleted scenes on the other side, on the full screen side. Yeah. No, no real reason. Yeah, why not? Yeah, it's baffling. It's I was once haunting at a, haunts me to this day. <laughs> um, I was at a Barnes and Noble, which has now really stepped up their game with their Criterion sale. Um, 
What do you mean? Barnes and Noble Criterion. Just that, no. It's just in general. The half off. But twice a year. But how they used to just like, hey guys, uh, MSRP. <laughs> we have them. Yeah. You can look at them. Um, I was there and someone was trying. It was like some old lady was buying secondhand lions, and was like, why is it so expensive? <laughs> and the guy's like, well, it's got. Uh, the clerk's like, it's got widescreen and full screen. It's like, oh, I guess, okay, I guess it's a good deal. <laughs> <laughs> I really enjoyed Second Hand Lines. I should watch it again. I enjoy the fact that having both widescreen and full screen should make it a better deal to pay manufacturers just at a retail price. Yes. <laughs> oh, Barnes & Noble, you're the worst. Although I do enjoy that. They, they, they've stepped up their physical media. Oh, I'm sure. I mean, oh. No, I agree. But part of the problem is that because well, both of our both of our collections were quite quite large. Yeah, it's it's definitely dwindled in size compared to what it was. Yes, you realize very quickly. The thing about buying DVDs is that everything started getting released on DVD. Old mm-hmm. stuff, new stuff, stuff you've never heard of, stuff you couldn't have seen before because it was independent or whatever, and you could get it very cheap. You can get it, you know, way cheaper than VHS. For those of you who remember VHS, they were a hundred bucks. They were brand new, and because you just you know, a, a person can't buy VHS, a institution must buy it and then rent it to you. And also, that's the other thing that DVDs did—they they killed the rental industry. Pretty much, yeah. Single-handedly, because it was so cheap now, you could just buy it. Why would you need to rent it? We could just buy it. Oh yeah, I mean you could. I mean you could buy. I mean the the idea of a of a five dollar bin of DVDs. But it's been around for a long time. I mean... That's not even the top of the used market. Yeah. You know? And so you would just buy DVDs because it's like, oh, I heard this was good. Let me buy it. I actually... I was at Best Buy once, and there was a guy, and he was in line. He was buying it. This was like 2001, 2002 or something. Um, he was buying Captain Corelli's Mandolin. <laughs> it's a, uh, Nicolas Cage is in it. I've never, I've never seen it. I never wanted to see it. And he was buying it. And he, likes, he was at this... He was in, in the checkout... And he saw, like, somebody he knew, and they're like, oh, hey, buying some DVDs? Like, it sounded like it was a commercial. <laughs> it's like, buying some DVDs? It's like, yeah, getting Captain Curly's Mandolin. He's like, oh, yeah? Um, oh, is, is any good? He's like, I don't know, I heard it was okay. But, hey, I heard it was okay. Oh, drop, drop 20 on it. Because you can't. It was cheaper than a VHS was, and it looks better. Mm-hmm. You know, and it has some, some resale value. I wonder no, if... No, Captain Corelli's Mandolin. Like that, I, <laughs> I wonder if that guy has Captain Corelli's Mandolin still. Like, if he, like, got it to, like, walk with his best gal, and, like, they proposed that night, and, like... <laughs> and now they're like, kids? <laughs> hey, you're old enough now. It's time to watch Captain Corelli's Mandolin. <laughs> um, this, is, this is why your mother and I decide, decide to, to get together and, and spend our lives together and have you. <laughs> it's probably... It's really, it's really beautiful. I have a question for you. Yes. What was your holy grail? Well, the thing that you sought out, not necessarily the, not necessarily the gem of your collection, but the, thing, but that the I, thing that you sought out because it took you forever and ever and ever to find. There were, well, there are a couple. One was Heavyweights, which did end up getting released on Blu-ray in a fantastic edition. Um, another was Angus, Yes, it was very limited release. Which was a manufactured on demand, which... Eventually, wasn't it? Yes, which, like, by Warner Brothers is like, hey, who cares, we're going to... The original cover art that they they really released it with was with a still where there's some random woman who's not Kathy Bates, but like some pre... Some, some like, pre-still where there's some woman holding him like it's mom, but it's not... What? Yes. That's bizarre. And there's like, yeah, here you go. <laughs> but I had it on. I had it on DVD. Yeah. Um, matinee. Matinee. Matinee was uh. John Goodman. Yes. Another Joe Dante. Hey Joe Dante, if you're also listening, because I think you like the podcast too. <laughs> um, are we Gremlins two and Matinee on the same show. <laughs> Come on. Come on. It's not. It's not like he's making movies anymore. Um, he is. He is a movie about a hole. I never saw it. <laughs> it's called The Hole. Well, I have it on my ne- I've had it on my Netflix queue since I've had a Netflix queue. I've never watched it. Yeah. I, 
parents don't read it. So, anyway. Just um, they come on the show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, matinee um, was a... Now, in the early early days of DVD, uh, $10 DVDs were, like, the cheap. like, whoa, it's only $10. I mean, if you were into buying DVDs, and you're like, whoa, only $10? I mean, I bet everybody had Suicide King, because it was only, like, seven eighty eight. Right. Did you have Suicide King? No. <laughs> I absolutely refused, but I know I know everybody did. <laughs> because because it was every, cheap. It was one of the it was one of the very first discount mm-hmm. DVDs. Deep discount DVD. Ooh, we could <laughs> spend a whole time discussing no, that. We <laughs> uh, yes. Just I, a I, bad customer <laughs> service. But. Yes. Um and I was at uh you remember Hastings? Uh huh. We had I they're still are Hastings. They're, still, they're, still, they're well, more of a, they're more of a southern thing. Well, there used to be one just down the street from where we're recording this episode right now. <laughs> and um, I, lo- I loved going there because they had used CDs and they had, <laughs> they had like books, used CDs, new CDs, um, a video rental. Right. And also you could buy videos and, and DVDs. And they had a $10 section. And there was a whole bunch of stuff on the ten dollars section. I wanted it all, and I, it was my birthday or near it because I was like, "Hey, mom, you should buy me some DVDs because DVDs are awesome," and it's my birthday. And there was um, so here's what here are the things that I got. I got um, singles. You know, Cameron Crowe's a uh, not popular movie back when he was. Oh wait, which one? <laughs> the one between um, the movies I really likes. Yeah, basically. Um, and Falling Down, personal okay. favorite. These are all snap too, by the they way. They are. <laughs> um, and I got Pacific Heights. Yeah, 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 yeah. Pacific Heights, a, uh, where Michael Keaton is the worst tenant, and there's like cockroaches or something. Anyway, the movies I did not pick up were Matinee and Mystery Science Theater 3000. Good. Which, Mystery Science Theater 3000 was eventually released, but Matinee was not. Well, it, it has been. On Blu-ray? No. But those were both... Like the kind, those were both the discs that oh I could have got those for ten dollars, but I have them on VHS. Do I need them on DVD? And then they went out of print immediately and sold for like a hundred dollars. And I got it, and I and I backed into a copy of MST3K the movie. Mm-hmm. Never sold it. And they both have been um, re-released on DVD and MST3K movie on Blu-ray. On Blu-ray. I Mat- bought on Blu-ray. Matinee has not been released on Blu-ray, but it was released on on DVD eventually years later. Um, and I got it. I got it first day because it's like, hey, I need to get this, and it's finally available. Now it's like part of like a, hey kids, here's like ten Universal movies, and it's like really? all, all like they're like, um, uh, all they're like animal movies, like the movie with a guy from Friends where he plays baseball with a monkey, yeah, and I like mean, Ghost Dad is in there. And the thing is, there shouldn't have been white, uh, you know, any sort of holy girls or white whales because it's like Amazon has it all. Mm-hmm. But oh, I'm trying to think of if I had any that were. Just, oh, so you're you're saying that that exists that you've never been able to get? No, or, or you got finally because yeah, there because is there is a certain that you searched forever for. I am still waiting for Death Becomes Her in widescreen special edition. It never came out. No, the only the only edition in the United States is the full screen one from like '98. No, I mean I'm just talking about stuff that like you wanted but never were able to get that exists. Oh. Or maybe you got it and you just it took you forever to get it. Hmm. I feel like I'm content and I got everything I wanted. Well, I, I can die now and happy because I had the DVDs I wanted. There you go. What, you, what, what is I it? don't know. I mean, I was thinking about it and it's, there was a bunch of DVDs that it, it, it was it was frustrating trying to get, but then I thought, think about it, I thought, you could have gotten the Amazon. Mm-hmm. I probably got them. Um, I'm trying to think of the m- m- most I ever paid for one. Oh. I know one of them was, um, and it's so funny, the things that you spend a little bit of money on, uh, I, I, like the, I, I got an Akira when it was released on DVD for the first time, that it came in like a tin edition, mm-hmm. and that went for $500 wow. well, for a time. I never saw it, but uh, what, I, I did eventually because I got the Blu-ray. Right what did you pay for it? I paid me to so I paid 40 since it was only available to I pre-ordered it on cue. It was cool. Um, that wasn't cool at all. What? Like ordering things on the internet was weird. It's like, you got to pay for shipping. Right. And well, how's it going to get to me? It's a mail? Yeah, <laughs> no, you, it, was, it, was, it was a different time, you know? 
I would say the most I probably ever paid was probably also 40 for the special edition of A Bug's Life. Okay. Way back. That nice one with yes. the green cover, with the leaf cover. Which, which I did get rid of when I got the Blu-ray because... <laughs> Why not? I mean, and also it's from, you know... I know what my white whale was forever, was the Freezing Geeks yearbook. Oh. See, I pre Which I now, it. you go to any half price books in America and get it for cheap. Yes. And I pre-ordered it. So it was not a white whale for me because I pre-ordered it. Because I was, like, keeping track. I was... Some... First of all, I'm sure there was some DVD website that I, like, would follow. And Digital bitch. Yep. <laughs> wow. The digital bits. <laughs> not bitch. That's a whole different website than you follow. Um, yes. Um, well, Get a Life was always something I was... Yeah. I was real like... Shout Factory fulfilled a lot of your dreams. Yeah, they did, actually. <laughs> One of their first releases was Freaks and Geeks. Yeah. Um, but, like, I would get... Like, I, I, I would clearly... I became obsessed with DVDs. It's like, I went to a store, I only bought three. Right, I was the same way. Um, New releases, I only did four this week. Yeah, only four this week. And, like, I, I, I go on, like, um, like Blu-ray.com and look at the deals, and then, like, I see people like, oh, it's a good week for my wallet, and, like, that's just not my life anymore. No. I mean, I have no desire to do that. Part of it is how, how, often, do I, how often would I watch those? I would say most of those I've never even sold once. And I would like, buy it to have it, and it was just yeah. sort of like, what are you doing? And like, well, like now with kids, like, I pretty much watch movies that um, my son can watch. And if not, that when's the last time? I'm not trying to think of the last time that like I watched a movie. And just like, oh, I want to watch that movie again, but it's for adults or whatever. I mean, I don't have kids, but I, you know, unless I'm gonna watch it again, I'm not buying it. But you had, but you did get. Then you get some stuff that you're like, oh, this is when I have future kids. Oh, I definitely like, have that, like but I enjoy Disney myself. I have, well, but I enjoy the Disney movies myself. Yeah. You know, it's 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 a it's a twofold. It, like, well, and DVD started the whole like slipcover thing. I do like slipcovers. Yes. I will, I will, I will, will cop to that. I do like my slipcovers. I I like them, but I like consistency. So like, if I if I have like one for, like if I don't have it for like part two, if I don't have it for part three, that annoys me. I can feel you. No, I can feel you. But like, I was I would I've been thinking recently about two thousand three. And if all the movies from 2003 were just, like, erased from existence, how many would I actually miss? I think right. it's, like, two. Yeah, and you could do that for a number of years. Like, like two. But I feel like 2003 is, like, the epitome of, like, like I, I, would, I would keep Finding Nemo. Yeah. And... That was, and so that was, no, that was the last Lord of the Rings. No, that wasn't the last That was the Lord of the Rings. Was it? Yeah. Okay. But if I, if I had to go in, then. if I had to pick, like, three... Probably going to pick Lord of the Rings. They're just like looking through like 2000, 2003. And yet, so like, but you, I, I asked myself. Your tastes change though. You know? Yeah, but I asked myself like, why, why did I need Seabiscuit on DVD and why did I need the special edition that came with like a booklet and an extra disc of how they did the sound effects? And, oh, I understand. Yeah, completely. But, but I had it. Yeah, no, I get that. And I was like that for a long time too. You know what happens? When you if you if you lose a job, if you have no money, these things disappear very quickly. You realize that it's like, oh, these aren't important at all. I do remember having like no money in my account and being like, Mom, I need thirty bucks. The new season of Seinfeld came out today. Oof. Actually, Seinfeld was the worst because they released two seasons at a time. Yeah. So actually, it was like sixty bucks. And now it's all <laughs> on Hulu. Yeah, it's funny, but I mean that's just you know it's a different time. It's growing up. It's growing up with a, a, a media expansion was rapid. Mm -hmm. I mean, never before was so much media readily available, and now it, what's available now dwarfs it, especially well, for value. Yeah, I mean, like a DVD now is like in the resale market is most are virtually worthless. It's worthless, whether the movie is great or not. It doesn't matter. The quality of the movie doesn't matter. In fact, a lot of really good movies because they make so many copies. Like you, like all right. So you walk into, let's say you walk into a, to a used, a used media store. What are you gonna see lots of copies of? Cat in the Hat. Yes. Eight Legged Freaks. <laughs> Waffle Screen Editions. <laughs> yes. Um, well, Scarlett Johansson's Finest Hour, right? 
I just remember David Arquette's stupid face on that cover. Uh, <laughs> well, because because when Joe Schmo America is wandering <laughs> wandering down the aisle at the big box store, <laughs> they want to see. I want to get a movie. Well, I like that David Arquette. He was uh, lots aside, of, aside from Scream. What else is he even in? Like, what do people know him and like him from? Ready to Rumble. <laughs> That's know. a deep guy. Yeah. <laughs> David Arquette Deep Cut. Steve, if you're listening to the show, we'll have you. Uh, was he in C-Spot Run? Yes. All right. All right. All right. He has a hot sister. Is he still married he has to... two hot sisters. Is he still married to Courtney Cox? No, 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 he has a hot wife and a hot sister. Okay. Well, wife, sister, too. Sister wives. <laughs> sister wives, if you're listening. <laughs> um, I mean, but you, you, I, I can just see it in my head. Some of the titles I can't think of off the top of my head, but I can... S- you know, I can see them because it's the same crap. I mean, the Cat in the Hat was notorious because I don't. The Cat in the Hat was a semi semi success. At well, the box office. It's a, I, I guess a success. It, I I I feel like a, I feel personally like there's no way you can associate the Cat in the Hat with success in any way. <laughs> <laughs> Financially, though. Even then, I mean. There was lots of there was lots of bad of, of comics. I was I, lots of like the Grinch who stole Grinch, Jim Carrey's the Grinch. How the Grinch? I was actually no, the looking, Grinch. It was yeah. just called the Grinch. I was actually looking up. Um, I was going down a down an internet rabbit hole, and, and it's like, oh, the cat. Like I was looking up movies from two thousand three, and I found it's like, oh, the Cat in the Hat, yeah. And like there's this. I think it was just the Wikipedia article. It's like, you know, uh, Doctor Seuss's widows. Like, there would be no more live-action movies after this exists. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's so awesome. That makes me laugh really hard. Oh, that's um, really beautiful. I mean, like, the guy that directed it was Bo Welch, who did, like, production... He did, he did like, all the cool production design for, like, um, like the movies that had, like, the Tim Burton movies in the 80s, mm-hmm. and, um, like, Men in Black. He did, like, like the movies that when you saw his name as a production designer, you're like, well, that's cool. Yeah. And it's like, oh, so maybe he'll be a cool director... And he has never directed another movie since. Right. I know that um, Men in Black had all, was always in new sections. Mm-hmm. The deluxe edition that was later on released in like 2004 or so. Well, because there was a big... Because uh... the original original release of Men in Black got a super, super nice edition. Mm-hmm. There was a, it was like, a, I don't know where it was, leather, but it was all black case. And it looked really classy. Well, speaking of special, special cases... Arbor Mist... Not Arbor Mist. Or Anchor Bay. <laughs> Arbor Mist is a cheap wine brand that you, that you can buy a three ninety nine bottle of wine. I Arbor mean, Mist, if you're listening. To me. I know you're thinking of Anchor Bay. Anchor Bay. Anchor Bay had the best special editions. I still have my Repo Man special edition. And um, they had their uh, Evil Dead, Book of the Dead. The two Book of the Deads. They had um, uh, Wicker Man Coffin. Mm-hmm. I mean, they had the best, and they have tons more. That were just real small, super small, limited editions that were yep. awesome. Uh, the special features were on them were always really great. Plus, you got to see that cool graphic of the ship going on going on the ocean. It looked really logo. cheap. Yeah. But see, but see, that's the other thing. These little companies could rise up to the occasion. Kino Video, mm-hmm. uh, you know, they they had a they they, they their specialties was mainly uh, silent films and, and uh, foreign films. But there was no market for that before. Right, and yet they would release, you know. They, 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 they are still around and they don't always release the absolute highest quality of stuff but they are able to release things that would have never been released before yeah which because, is really cool and like like the, like the DVD and digital really brought on restoration efforts mm-hmm. like they were like Criterion I mean Criterion was around in the Laserdisc days but not like they are now Criterion yeah. in Laserdisc it was it was a cool thing but it's like they were taking on movies like Ghostbusters and contemporary hits that People weren't interested in making into lasers. Now they are an institution. Mm-hmm. I mean, like I'm, tr- like I'm sure there's data somewhere, but even a movie that's just like, hey, we're Criterion releasing a movie that no one's ever heard of by a director that no one's ever heard of. Like what? Th- what's their lowest seller? I guess is my. Is that more I would be shocked if it sold anything less than, than a, an X amount of copies. You know, like five thousand, ten thousand. Um, I would be shocked if there's any of their titles that sell below a minimum that they've already been. Necessary because they because they've already they built up such they've built a brand that people really and the thing is they started off terrible those early Criterion discs are junk that's why they went back and re-released them 
four. But like a lot of them were just garbage. They were they were formatted incorrectly. I know, for example, the original Yojimbo Sanjuro uh, Seven Samurai discs. Yeah. They were formatted incorrectly. They were they were fake widescreen. Oh. You you heard it here first. Of all. <laughs> no, because on my widescreen television they wouldn't automatically format to a for a sixteen by nine television. They would format to a pillar box. Did they um? And uh, as widescreen. Yeah. How many people um, do you think have the whole collection? Eighteen. <laughs> All right. If any, of you, if any of you eighteen people out there want to share your whole Criterion collection and your knowledge of it, um, I read an article about a guy who was trying to collect every VHS copy of Speed. Yes, and he's collected several thousand of them. That's an awesome article. And if you if you listen to this, Google that right now because this is a real this thing. Is, this is, and it's really beautiful. He'll talk about all the copies of Speed that he owns, and, and his house is his house or his apartment or whatever is okay. just filled with them. I assumed that he had a bus that he filled with it. Or was that just something I made up? <laughs> it's made it up. It's really beautiful. <laughs> and, uh, and the bus has to go fifty five miles an hour, or else all the VHS tapes deteriorate in right. the sun. I don't know where, I think it started because he kept going places, much like seeing the cat in the hat at every used place, <laughs> and find speed VHS everywhere. Mm -hmm. Could you imagine if someone decided to collect every cat in the hat DVD, full screen only? You could commit suicide. <laughs> I mean, that, just I, like the I entire cast I mean, and crew still... after the movie. <laughs> True fact. <laughs> um, the thing is, I, I, there's a bunch of movies, and you know them off the top of your head. Like, like the, the, some of the first Terminator 2 releases, those are always in those in the key yeah. sections. Like, you know you know what they are off the top of your head, but I can't think of them. But for whatever reason, whenever I think of used DVDs <laughs> that are just prevalent everywhere, the Cat Hat is number one, because you would find that in every single used section. Now, in used CDs, I assume that, they, that all used CD sections are still like 50% um, Bush 16 Stone and um, No Doubt Treasure <laughs> Kingdom. <laughs> Has that changed? I, or? I, I, you know what? 16 Stone get the bad rap. There's a lot of good songs on that album. I will defend that. Bush, if you're listening. <laughs> and wasn't it great how they, how they how they got married? What's his name? Gavin Rossdale and, and um, the Gwen Stefani. Yeah. And they were, but they were both Mario and Ben. Yeah, do you think they, yeah, because they were like. The, used CDs. Like, like that, like that sort of like validated my youth a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> There's a. Um, been of Gavin Rosdale. <laughs> there is uh, in a in a Wu Tang song, uh -huh. um, O.D. Bing uh, s sings the lyrics. I don't remember what song it is off the top of my head. It's not a song, like a hip hop or songs. Um, but it said he sings uh, "Do It Raw" style, and for whatever reason, by the way he announces it, <laughs> it sounds like Gavin Rosdale. <laughs> and it's my absolute favorite thing to say, Gavin Rosdale, because it, but it's saying "Going Raw" style. Whenever I think of, whenever I hear the name Bush, I still think the band first, and like president like second and yeah. third in my mind. The second and third meaning the, <laughs> yeah. the, both of them? Yes. <laughs> I mean, I, I listened to 16 Stone the other day. How about Razor Blade Suitcase? No. It's got some good stuff. Nah, I'm not listening, I'm not interested in anything past 16 Stone. <laughs> 16 Stone's got the hits I want to hear. Yeah, but, um, no. I, I, this is Radio Adrian, <laughs> spinning 16 Stone all day long. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to go listen to some, uh, what is it, ex-girlfriend, that, like, 20-second track at the end. Yeah. Um, I had a friend who worked it on cue. <laughs> on cue! Wait, was it, wait, was it on cue or Sam Goody? It was on cue. Okay. That's what we don't talk about Sam Goody, <laughs> or the Native American man who worked there. Because he was a, order. he was a dick. <laughs> and I knocked down that Hanzo standee, and if you're listening, I don't regret it. Also, I, on, when they, I think it was when they were Sam Goody, um, Alright. So, uh, <laughs> we, 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 we have gone so far of the beaten path here. Right. So, so New Line released this, the awesome edition of Seven. Um, the, the two disc, fantastic special features, upgraded picture quality, um, supervised by the director, and Sam Goody, or on cue, whatever it was, they somehow got this like huge shipment of the original version, which was a flip disc where you watch half the movie and then flip it over. 
And they had made this huge display that had like 50 copies like right at the front registers. And they weren't selling it for cheap either. No, it was like $15. <laughs> I remember. You could, you could get this the special edition for like that price or Which, slightly more. And the thing is, outside of Criterion Collection, I, and I think for DVD aficionados, they would agree that that 7 disc is one of the best, the Platinum Series edition is one of the best DVD releases ever. It's got every, it's got it, every, every, and, any question you would have is answered. And the thing is, ultimately, you could get it even used for 10 bucks or less yeah. later on in its life. But they had, but it, well into the life, they had all these 70s. I remember that. <laughs> like, like, it's like somebody found them and <laughs> probably in some box somewhere. Right. 1488 um, for y'all. <laughs> um, but no, I, I had a friend who worked, who worked at, at OnQ when um, Razorblade Suitcase came out. And he actually came to school um, he wasn't allowed to take. He, he took. He took a Polaroid of it, of like, of the, of a disc. Like they took it out of the, out of the box and like it was in the packaging. Mm-hmm. And it was like, whoa! I can't wait till street date. And anyway, he was excited. Yeah, and I know who it is too. So. <laughs> I wonder if he listens to our show. Jason, if you're listening. Yes. <laughs> um. <laughs> he was that excited about razor blade suitcase that he had to take a photo of it. He was. That's my favorite. That's, my, shared, that's the favorite thing I've heard this evening. And share and sharing it. It's like, hey guys, I'm not supposed to show anybody this, but I've got the Polaroid of the cover of Razor Blade Suitcase that like I, I've seen this disc in my hand. I've I've held it. We live in a really magical time. When you can talk about Bush, Gavin Rossdale. And, and ODB singing about him. <laughs> You have you have a bit of notes, and did you want to talk about the Super Troopers cover that all you? <laughs> yes, yes, I did. It's a good thing I wrote down Super Troopers, um, because as as we all know, the Super Troopers cover it's about it's well, Super Troopers about these cops, and they're kind of crazy. I mean, I, I guess I mock it, but I, mean, I did enjoy the movie when I saw it. I hate it. I hate that movie so much. <laughs> but the thing is, that's another movie that those is those that, guys mm-hmm. owe their entire careers to the fact that DVD exists. Now, in the cover of the DVD, it says Super Troopers, and then the, because because they're crazy cops, they're all upside down at the top of it, and <laughs> anytime you'd go anywhere, someone would flip it over so that the people were upright, even though the words were upside down, yep. because no one knows how to read? I don't know. It's just silly. I, you know, and I was thinking... The reason DVD also took off was because that was the direction of video games took off. Oh. The PlayStation 2 had a built-in DVD player. Yes. And that's what bolstered PlayStation 2 sales as well at the beginning. People were like, oh, I would like to get, I would like to get DVDs. I can get a PlayStation 2 and play video games and DVDs? Sign that's, me up. Yeah. And, I, you know, we've talked a lot about uh, really good DVDs, really bad DVDs. But I think probably the best DVD had to be Sweet Home Alabama. <laughs> because now Sweet Home Alabama has Reese Witherspoon and some guy who was mildly popular at the time who being the love interest. It wasn't McConaughey, was it? No, it wasn't McConaughey. But it was a McConaughey-esque dude. Yes. It was very McConaughey-esque. So, what was McConaughey doing around that time? Movies like Sweet Home Alabama. Yeah. Don't you love that we live in the Makana? Makana era. Are we, are we call, what are we calling it? Makana era. Right. Makana. Makana era. Con era. It's, it's Makana Hayes world. We're just living in it. Hold on. Go ahead and talk with about Sweet Home Alabama. So Sweet Home Alabama, um, I, she's like she's like this big city girl, but she's from the country. She's basically she's just. You can explain the plot to Sweet Home Alabama. <laughs> yeah, she's two, she has to choose between two guys, and at the end of the theatrical cut, she like, hey guys. Um, I don't know what happened. There's like something about sand, and if lightning hits sand, it turns into glass, which I don't. It's no, not real. That doesn't, that doesn't exist. <laughs> but it, the, it ends with like a like a big party. She marries whatever guy the audience was rooting for. I guess I don't remember. Right. Anyway, the alternate ending, mm-hmm. which makes this probably the best DVD that exists that I don't actually have and never want to have, and the alternate ending. Um, that without DVD, no one would have ever seen this ending. <laughs> is the guy he carry he carry, he walks into like the bar where they're having the party. He's carrying her in his arms, and he goes, 
She's dead. She got struck by lightning. Right. I remember this. And then everybody, and then waits a really long time while everybody like is in shock because it's supposed to be like a wedding. Yeah. And then she's like, "Hey guys, I'm reborn again." Like some sort of like fake like I'm reborn again, and I love this guy. But like, fakes like all her friends and family into thinking she's dead. Because of lightning strike, and now she's a country girl again. Yeah. How would we have known about that if it wasn't for the wonderful digital versatile disc? I don't know. His name is Josh Lucas, and boy, does he look like what kind of <laughs> What has he done for me lately? Uh, J. Edgar. He was Charles Lindbergh in okay. Tony Stewart's J. Edgar. He was in the hit Jamie Foxx $100 million action film Stealth. Oh, yeah? You remember what? Stealth? Remember back when Jamie Foxx was in Bait? Bait was good. Well, guess who else was in Sweet Home Alabama? Who? Right before his big return to success, a big dreamy himself, Patrick Dempsey. Oh. And the most popular woman of the 1990s in the Sea Org, Dan Quayle. That's right, Murphy <laughs> Brown fans. Candace Bergen. <laughs> All right. Now, clearly, we can't we can't wrap this up without talking about Circuit City. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have another three hours? Because strap the fuck in. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, Circuit City began there. Circuit City began in a primordial <laughs> that birth life, and as life crawled out of it, it devolved back into even worse anti-life. <laughs> That's where Circuit City <laughs> Circuit City. Okay, you know when you have Best Buy, and it's kind of cool. I mean, nobody goes to Best Buy anymore. Nobody goes to stores anymore, let's be honest. They all just shop online. But, but Best Buy, if you want to go get DVDs or electronics, that's usually where you go. They had a competitor named Circuit City. That was just the worst. And imagine not having a Best Buy in your city, but having a Circuit City what, only. Where, there's, where, where were the, where is there? Bloomington, Indiana for years. No Best Buy. No it, Best Buy. We got a Best Buy in 2005. <laughs> we had the Circuit City, and then it closed, so we had only Target. But Target does have some really good prices on discs. And so I don't know why it's the border on mine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Circuit City's um, <laughs> beginning with the, with the digital home format. It began by murdering its brother, <laughs> Abel. <laughs> <laughs> don't turn and look at the city. You'll turn into a pillar or something. <laughs> 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 So, Divix. God. <laughs> Divix was a DVD that you could enter, you could buy for like $4. Mm -hmm. So more expensive than renting at the mm -hmm. time. Um, and then watch it unlimited for about like two days. Right. Like two or three days. And then you could pay $20 and it would unlock the disc forever. Or it would just like essentially be a worthless, worthless disc. Right. And you had to have a special DivX player. Right. And they were big into this. Like, they had all kinds of stuff like that. They had those... Remember when there was those digital CDs that were supposedly better than normal CDs? Yes. The digital the, bits talked about those quite well, a bit. Not, they, weren't high, they weren't HD CDs, but they were essentially that. But you couldn't play them on any player. You had to play them on an HD CD player. <laughs> What's the benefits of an HD CD player? They play HD CDs. <laughs> What's not, not DVDs. Nothing visual. This is all audio. For them audio Circuit files. City, double down on this. Great idea. Let me put it this way. Circuit City is the HD DVD of stores. <laughs> That's very apt. It is very apt. So they start, they, they only stock these DivX movies. So they have this huge section that rivals the, the section size of like Best Buy's comparable DVD right. section. At the time. time, and at the time, and you know, Best Buy's DVD sections have shrunk, but back in the day, they were yeah. 12, 14 rows. I mean, it's like now they assume everybody's going to buy stuff online, and unless it's like the big hit, yeah. and that's... And that's fine. That's, that's where the market has moved, but I mean, back in the day, it was like 14 yeah. rows, and Circuit City was the same. And Circuit, but Circuit City has like, here's all these DivX movies, because all these studios were like, hey, let's and, I, and I, I picked up a couple when they were on clearance for like 75 cents. And I, it was one of the first times I ever went to Circuit City was to get these hilarious these hilarious joke discs. Mm -hmm. um, I got Dirty Work okay. and The Water Boy. Nice. And how Stella got her groove back. <laughs> and 
um, like the like the, the guy at the checkout. There's a, wait, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> well, go ahead with this story, and then we'll talk about was like Circuit oh, City checkout. Oh, you're getting uh, you got uh, there's some good ones here, and you got the player. It's like no, these are like it's like a joke. <laughs> because they were clearing them all out, um, but like the guy didn't understand why anyone would. First of all, maybe he was an adult enough. First of all, he worked in Circuit City, so probably not. But he was an adult enough to be like, why would you buy something as a joke? Because <laughs> you know who, who needs that? You work at Circuit City, you'll never understand. Yeah, but no, Circuit City, Circuit City would have things like Circuit City would have an ad, and they would have things featured in the ad. That the employees did, would tell you didn't exist. Well, not only would they tell you didn't exist, you would check on a Wednesday and they wouldn't even have them out. Uh, and, okay, for our listeners who are don't know why Wednesday's important. It's Tuesday. Tuesday was the day. Um, you had Monster Tuesday when Monsters Inc. came out. You had Spy Kids Tuesday when Spy Kids came out. You had whatever movie was supposedly big. It, um, it was always Tuesday releases. Except when it was on a Friday, right. which was like basically like DreamWorks trying to stick it to Disney. So, like, DreamWorks movie would always... Like, the big DreamWorks like movie... Shrek 2. Like, Shrek 2 came out the same day The Incredibles came out in theaters. And we all remember which one's more popular. Well, I don't know. I mean... Shrek 2. That scene that scene where it's, it's like Spider-Man. Yeah. I mean... <laughs> it's it's Shrek and Fiona kissing. <laughs> just like Spider-Man. <laughs> Shrek is not direct, guys. Um, hey, remember that time in, in Shrek 2 when there's a Starbucks and there's a Starbucks across the street? <laughs> Get it? Because there's lots of Starbucks. Shrek 2 is the Circuit City of movies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go on a bit of a rant here. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna Dennis Miller this. Dennis Miller. Circuit City. Dennis here, Miller now. Here, 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 here is like what what walking right. in the Circuit Dennis, City. Dennis Miller now or Dennis Miller uh, Bordello of Blood era. Nah, well Bordello of Blood because I'm not gonna put politics into it. Okay. Here's what walking in the Circuit City is like. Oh wow, there's lots of TVs here. I better go look for the new releases. Okay, they seem to be in alphabetical order. I'm looking for the Blues Brothers. Let me check B. Let's see. Wind Talkers? (laughs) (laughs) Bordello of Blood? Okay, there's one B. Um, You know, The Wizard? Wow, there's a lot of W copies in here. Because... Circuit City, what the letter is supposed to be under, that's not where your disc is. New releases are not a new release section. They're usually just filed away under random letters and random genres. Oh yeah, they are usually separated by genres, you know, action, horror, etc. But good luck finding your the, the new kids release, because usually that's gotten shoveled into horror. Why? No one really knows. And the, when you go in at 10 o'clock a.m. on the Tuesday... You know it's not some guy who did it earlier to hide it. You know it's just dumb employees <laughs> doing it. Now, that's just the, the fact that there's nothing shelved correctly. And uh, that's not to even mention the fact that their, uh, for example, video game section is abysmal. They don't have anything in stock ever. That's the big thing about Series 8. There's nothing in stock ever. You can have a million things in their ad, and guess what? It won't be there. The ad mostly existed so you could price match. Right. <laughs> I mean, the ad existed so you could take it to another store and be like, can I get this price? And they say yes. I, there, I, I remember more times walking out of Circuit City empty-handed except for the ad. than with To take it somewhere else and get the price. Because they would offer a better price. Because, and here's, and here's the thing. If you could ever actually find what you were looking for. Good luck checking out. Because <laughs> there was no designated checkout area. There was not. And that's the other thing. Oh my god. You would wander around. And the thing is, when you first come in, you would be barraged. As bad as Best Buy is or any of these other stores, you would be barraged by people. Oh, can I help you? Can I help you? No, I'm just not here. Can I help you with something? Just barraged by every single employee you tried it because they were paid commission on everything in Circuit City back in the day. Like, in, instead of having any any air, like designated checkout area, there was random computers that that's where you check out. But you had to find somebody... To right. assist you. If because you just you know stand why? there. Because so if what? you said you didn't need help, they ran away from you to find somebody else to ask if they could help. And you had to find a checkout code. Usually I checked out at the return desk because yeah. there was yep. somebody that was forced <laughs> to be there. <laughs> that was the only place that they were ever Half assisted. the time, guess what? They were not. And also, I think part of the reason that they went under was because their receipts were huge. Like, their receipts were like... That's what I was like... about to get to. <laughs> okay. 
after you pay for your DVD that maybe you found, maybe you were lucky enough to find it, or, you know, maybe you just pulled out a rat's nest that you wanted to tell them about <laughs> and checked out, you received your receipt. Your receipt was the size of an atlas map. <laughs> it was just the longest, widest thing in the world. They're like, oh, just sign in this box. And the thing is, there's no reason for it to be this big. It was absurd. Well, am I, am I, am I, I mean, like, the pa- they, would, they would take this, and the best part, every time it, <laughs> they would take this absurd, nearly, I want to say at least three inches wide <laughs> receipt, and it was at least a foot long every time, if not two feet long. Mm. And they would cram a little piece into their little sign-in <laughs> pad so that you could sign it in pen on top of this thing and they could capture your signature. But the, cap- the signature capture wasn't some digital one or anything. They had the, the it was completely analog. <laughs> well, well, that would make sense for an electronics store, right? Right, especially one like Circuit City, <laughs> where the customer is lost in a maze and being chased by the Minotaur. <laughs> because that's what it was like. And, like, I can never, like, I never bought anything, like, any higher ticket items than, like, a DVD. I would never buy a higher ticket item. Be- because the customer service was so bad, for that, it's like, well, why would I want to buy something bigger than that? Oh, absolutely. And the thing that my favorite part about Service City is that there would be so many employees just hanging around the car section. They love, they love, they love the car stereos so much. And people would just go in there. And I never saw anybody buy anything in Circuit City minus me. I must have been the sucker because <laughs> I bought things in a Circuit too. City. Now, now the Circuit City here in Fort Wayne is a Chinese buffet. And it's much better for it. Yeah. You know, I like, I like they the have way. less rats there now than they did in Circuit City this day. Circuit well, City, it was the moment they said it was closing. I was so happy. I, I was too. And at first there was like, and then there were like online online trolls, if you will. Like, you guys are gonna be so upset that Circuit City's gone because now there's no competition, so everything's gonna be more expensive. Those people were wrong. You're right. You know why? Because Circuit City's dumb. Remember when they tried to be like, we're just online now. Yeah, yeah, and it's like in an Amazon world, what are you going to compete with? Oh my God, Circuit City! That's, sir, I, I almost want to make a brand new co- podcast just to, expelling grievances about individual events that occurred in C- Circuit City. Hey, I want to buy this disc. Well, that's not out. It's in your ad, right here. No, that does, no, that's not out this week. That's, that's not a, that's not a movie. That's not a real movie. It's right there in your ad. Oh, uh, let me go check in the back. And then you see them walk somewhere, <laughs> and that's not the back. Yeah, we don't have that. This is not this is not something that happened once in a while. And the thing is, Joseph and I, foolish enough, would be like, "Do you really want to go to Circuit City?" And then we would. And then we would, and we'd laugh about it afterward. Like it was like it was it was a it was like a joke. But every once in a while, you'd find something for a good price. You would find something for a good price, but it was more just for like. We know this is going to be awful. Let's go and laugh about it. We'll have memories of us doing this awful thing. I mean, like, you know, like, have you have you listened to the serial, the podcast? Yeah. I mean, that would that would not be popular. Like, can you imagine how less popular that podcast would be if it, it was all about a Circuit City payphone instead of a Best Buy payphone? I mean, I wandered around a circuit, the Circuit City in Bloomington for an hour and a half one, one time. Why? I don't know. I didn't buy anything. You wanted a Best Buy there? Because I was just like looking at everything they had there and just thinking this would be better if it was a Best Buy. And then I bought the color and the shape of for some reason. Now, (laughs) because I didn't have it on CD for some reason. Now this is not to say that like, like I'm not pro Best Buy by any means. I'm not really Uh, guy, Like the guy who would try to get you to buy Netflix. Oh, that guy. The guy who's like, Jobs. this is pretty cool Netflix. This is disc rental Netflix. When, yeah. And it's Which like, nobody uses. Except for a few people. But. Yeah, like nine people. If any of you nine people <laughs> overlap with the, what, 18, 18 people <laughs> who have all the criterions. Because clearly, if you have all the criterions, you still have a disc service from Netflix, right? Because you're not going to buy. You're just going to buy stuff. No. <laughs> um, what if they, oh, all right, a question. Do they only have criterions? No. Okay, so they have other stuff. Because there's still art films that are released around. They are, they are, they're region free. They're getting stuff in the UK. Okay, so they, so that, so they have. So which version of the Third Man do they have? 
The Studio Canal or the both? Well, yeah. <laughs> um, these are the one percent we're talking about, you know. The one percent of people that have yeah, <laughs> that, have <laughs> that has all the criterion. Right. What if? Why doesn't like some politician run like I'm running for president? Why should we be president? Um, I have all the criteria in collection. <laughs> yeah, I would vote for them probably. I mean, how how bad could they be? I mean, he name drops Akira Kurosawa, and I'd be like, what? It's like, um, excuse me, do you even have um, um yeah, like, yeah, that's number one hundred and four. I don't know. What is, but... Do you have Ingmar Bergman? Do I? <laughs> See, that's that's an elective. Now, right now, there. do they do, do they organize them by spine number? I mean, if you have the Criterion Collection. Yeah. How, how, do, I, how, I do. how do you organize? I like my spine number. I meant of everything. Oh, my, my organization is a mess right now. You organize it by color, right? Oh my god, no. <laughs> it's so stupid. I mean, I would either do it alphabetically, <laughs> by director alphabetically, or by usually I would do it by director chronologically. Because mm -hmm. genre is too difficult. See, here's where I get in trouble with director chronologically. Mm -hmm. Christopher Nolan. Because of Batman? Yep. And you want those Batman together? I do want those Batman together. I didn't even get the steel books to not have them next to each other. We could also do series. Yeah. And throw the remainders in there, but then what about the criterion that you run out of the criterion? You don't want to put a criterion without the rest of the criterion. Well, what do I do with David Fincher? Uh do you know I got all his? Uh, no problem. Why? Oh, because of the because criterion. the criterion. You put the criterion to the criterion. And the other thing, like with with him and um, and with Paul Thomas Anderson, not all of their movies are on Blu-ray. Well, Heart Eight's not very good, but it's still. But the one you're talking about, Punch Drunk Love. Yeah. Um, and well, 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 I think it's surprising. Punch Drunk Love, and it's not Pan Blu-ray. Panic Room. You're right, Panic Room. Which is interesting because they're, they're both Sony. And, and Sony, that's probably the big, why. Sony's the big like, oh, we gotta put everything on Blu-ray. That's probably why. That doesn't make any sense. No, Panic Room's not very good. I, like, I would, I, I would like to see. Pun I mean, I have seen Punisher of Love in not in true HD on Netflix mm -hmm. HD. It looks great. Yeah, I'd love to see it in a true 1080p, uh, you know, HD, mm -hmm. not streaming HD. I, I enjoy Panic Room. When's the last time you saw Panic Room? The only time I've seen it. Give it, give it another try. I saw it with you. I know, we saw it together. We did. We saw another movie that day. <laughs> Do you remember the other movie? Death the Smoochie. It was Death the Smoochie. Which was impossible to find the widescreen version of it. That's why I never owned it on DVD because it's always full frame. You know where I went to go look for it? Because it was in their ad? Circuit City. And they're like, that doesn't exist. <laughs> Do you remember when you bought Ed Wood and then they pulled it? Ooh! I did get that at Circuit City. Yeah. That... All right. See, so, but Circuit City, you can milk for those kinds of mistakes. <laughs> yes, Circuit City, um, very, very few times, Ed Wood is one of them, where it was released and then pulled, supposedly because there was a special feature that, they, I think it was like their special feature, they didn't have like the clearance to something, like some music track. Or it took two years for it to get finally released, didn't it? It took an absurd amount of time. Yeah. Um, but it was, it was released, and it's like, oh man, now it's been pulled. Circuit City, because they don't know where anything is. No, and you got it. Yeah. And I didn't. And I was very sad. Ooh. I, we, there have been times where we've gotten things where one of us has gotten and the other one hasn't. I think it's been mostly you. That was the one that always burned my britches. Ooh. Bringing up some sore subjects. Yeah. Ed Wood, guys. Ed Wood. Ed Wood. Also, I don't know where that, I don't know where my original Ed Wood is. I, I got it used Your years later. original, original one? My original, original. Because I actually, I kept... I kept the receipt in there to prove when I got it right. because it was right because it was you know not and not allowed to be sold time. for a while for a long time yeah it was at least a year if not more well but I had it on VHS but you know DVDs are fun what can I say but how do you organize your DVDs if it's if you're by director but there's DVDs mixed in the middle is that okay DVDs mixed in the middle no you sort those by series. Okay, so well, I mean, like, so you don't. So since you don't like Panic Room, you don't have Panic Room. So your Fincher collection doesn't. It's, it's not complete, but it's chronological to where what I have. And then if there's a series, you know, like uh, for example, um, uh, what's his name? Um, the children event. Um, Gravity. Yes. Curium. 
Yes, you know, I have his movies, but one of them is Criterion, and then one of them is Harry Potter. So what do you, yeah, what do you, what what do you do with Harry Potter? You put it in the Harry Potter series. You put it on its own. I'm kind of annoyed because I have the Harry Potter um, I got a really good deal on the box, this box set that has like movies one through like five. Right. Because one through five were ones I had on DVD and then from six on I got on Blu-ray originally. Now, now it's not. Because I had this box that, it's this box and then like, and then like three six, or four seven, things. Like, six, six, seven, seven, part two. Yeah. There's three things left out. Right. But, what are you going to do? I mean, at that point. Because it was like, it was like $20 for those five movies. I mean, at that point you're trading value for aesthetic. It's a neat box. It has a it has a golden snitch pin, the bookmark or something. I don't know. I looked at it <laughs> once. It was cool. <laughs> I mean, I, uh, and then you, well, the problem is it's just trying to uh, file it all away. How do you file it? You know, I mean, TV. Well, I used to do drama and comedy. Well, what about animation? Well, there's an anime comedy. Well, what about kids animation? Well, no, it really shouldn't go with it. I once had a. It's, it, you can really go down a deep rabbit hole, but, I, like, but every every time I sort of make sense, sorting my color makes no sense, Joey. <laughs> I don't sort my color. I know, but people do, and it pisses me off. The uh, once once I sorted, um, I had a, I had a section called comedy, and then I had um, a separate section called fantastical comedy, where I put things like like Groundhog Day and Bruce Almighty in Inner Space. That would yeah, I put I mean, that would the time. go there. I, yeah, I had that at the time. The thing is, I, there's some movies I used to have on DVD. It's like, oh yeah, I had that at one time. And, and why would you? And did I ever watch it? Like Bruce Almighty. Yeah. Why would you have that? Because uh, it was a movie that came out, and I was like, I saw that movie. I should get it. Yeah. And like, like I, mean, I would do all kinds of stupid things. Like, when sales tax was raised, sales tax used to be five cents, and then it raised it to seven cents. Yeah, seven percent. Um, and I'm like, well. Sales tax is going up uh, two cents a dollar um, tomorrow. Now's a good time to buy Blade. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta, gotta say those, like. Yeah, because you gotta say those 20 cents. Wesley Snipes face off against. Uh, what was the guy's name? Was it, was it Steven Dorf? Yeah, Dorf. <laughs> was, it, was that the one where he goes fishing? Yeah. These Blade fights the vampires, midget the fishes. <laughs> Now that's a movie. It plays golf. That's a movie that they would let Wesley Snipes out of jail to make. That's still his yeah, deal, absolutely. right? Absolutely, Mr. Snipes. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're listening. Um, what? Well, I just have one question for you, Mr. Snipes. Um, in past year fifty-seven, <laughs> <laughs> who? I don't remember past year fifty-seven. I'm sorry. Well, I never saw Passenger 57 because I didn't see Passengers 1 to 56. Burn! And imagine how much that would cost to buy the complete Passengers <laughs> collection on, on a VHS. <laughs> Thanks because for listening. They... <laughs>